Dun, 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 dun. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Super exciting Tony Awards. Oh my gosh. Ariana was amazing. She was such a good host. I hope she does it again. I absolutely loved all the musical performances. Uh, yeah, okay, so not all of my predictions were dead on, but I called some major surprises, which I'm even surprised. Uh, I picked Deirdre O'Connell and I'm still shocked she won. I'm so elated but i am shocked she won <laughs> yes i am really happy for miles frost as rooting for jaqua but i i think that was so well deserved jennifer hudson did egot yes i i really want to go back and rewatch the opening number and the closing number because those were just perfect <laughs> no james corden yeah oh seriously ariana debose has so much talent um, I don't know if anybody else heard the uh, bring it on that they squeezed into that opening number, but that was definitely a highlight for me. <laughs> the only person to EGOT was uh, Jennifer Hudson this awards, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. And I mean, Jennifer Hudson could EGOT however she wants. <laughs> you know, I would have been surprised by the amount of awards that Lehman Trilogy won had I not seen it, uh, but it truly, yeah. Oh, it was the best play by far and had no reason to be that good being three hours about the economy. I like it, but it was just, it was so good y'all. I'm, I'm so happy that Lucy Moss and Toby Marlowe pulled out a score because they're just, they're so good and I cannot wait to uh, see what they have to do next. And I was really sad that Six was gonna go away empty handed and it didn't. So great for them and uh, Gabriella Slade. And they did such a great opening number. Yeah, I, the Six wins were perfect. Michael R. Jackson losing score was not surprising to me because uh, yeah, I feel like they, it was, it was good on them to give Six something considering, you know, Six would have won best musical in 2020. <laughs> So I like I like that they gave it score and then um, Michael R. Jackson got book, uh, which hands down was the best book of the season. Yeah, six killed it. I'm I'm super happy that one six one score and that they ended with the six performance so that we got the six performance followed by the estranged loop win. I thought that was the perfect way to end the night, um, so that we really got to showcase the best two shows of the season. That was a that was a nice compromise whether that was predicted or not. I, I had no doubt, I had no doubt, no doubt it was going to win. <laughs> there were some I didn't know who was going to win, but a Strange Loop winning Best Musical is the one, the one hands down, I had no doubt. We do stand Mallory. So I was, uh, if anybody was following me on Twitter, I was doing a tally of all the times they shouted out the understudies and swings, and we ended up at nine. Um, though I did count Mallory going on and Ariana shouting out Mallory as two separate times. And I also counted the, uh, the Spring Awakening cast, including their swings and understudies in their performance, um, because I always think it's cool that they did that. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah, Mallory was fantastic. I'm really glad that uh, she even got a special shout out at the end by Ariana DeBose because well-deserved. Um, and truly showcasing uh, understudies and swings in the time of COVID for sure. Yeah, super happy for Matt Doyle and Patti Lapone. Um, a little part of me was hoping that El Morgan Lee would would pull out the win, but <laughs> it, Patti Lapone steals that show. So her and Jen Samard, honestly, both of them are fantastic. The whole company cast is fantastic, but um, yeah, honestly, a lot of a lot of the acting awards were so tough for me because I I wanted multiple of them to win, <laughs> and and featured actress in a musical is definitely one of those. I uh, I predicted Jesse Tyler Ferguson's win, so I'm super happy with that. I thought he was fantastic. That was another category that a lot of them were great, but um. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Felicia Rashad is the only award that I'm upset by. And don't get me wrong, she was fantastic, but Kanita Miller was robbed. And the fact that Kanita Miller showed up to the awards a week after giving birth and was performing on that stage eight and nine months pregnant, robbed. Just completely robbed. That's the, on the only one. Uh, yeah, I wanted for Colored Girls to win Best Revival um, since Skin of Our Teeth wasn't nominated. I am a little bummed that it didn't, it didn't get anything, actually. Um, I wanted it to get uh, Revival, uh, Kanita Miller, and then um, Serafina Bush for costumes. Um, but I am, I am happy that Skin of Our Teeth got costumes. Which uh, I was asking this the other day, but I wonder, I didn't know if the, if the puppets counted as costume design or uh, scenic design for that show. Uh, and I imagine that they would count as costume design, so it makes sense that uh, that's what Skin of Our Teeth won. Look, 
in a perfect world, we would have a puppetry category because I freaking love puppets in shows. Um, <laughs> we would also have an ensemble category and we would separate best play and best production of a play because those are two different things. I, I don't understand why we can have uh, best score, book, and orchestrations for a musical, but best play is just lumped into best play. <laughs> yeah, so Paradise Square, uh, like, not even, not even gonna lie, that, their performance was just, they did the right thing. I didn't think that they were going to do Let It Burn because it is very much the 11 o'clock number, <laughs> but they, I think they did such a good uh, choice by having her perform it. Oh, Joaquina is so good. She's so good, and I'm really, I'm really glad she pulled out the win. As much as I, I'm very lukewarm on that musical, but they, they highlighted the best part of it, and I'm, I'm really happy for them. Paradise Square for set design. I mean, that's a choice. <laughs> Co company set design is like so good though. This is true. The, the, the lamp does not play a big part at all in Paradise Square other than I guess, you know, let it burn. <laughs> Even though that is not what she's singing about. Music Man's performance is the only one that did not sell me on that show. It's, it's one of three shows I haven't seen and I don't think I'm gonna go see it now. <laughs> It was, uh, but what I did love about Music Man's performance is when they had all the kids in the audience. Uh, that's just, that that was fun. I loved that. Yeah, it just, it did. It felt bland. Hugh Jackman just wasn't charismatic enough for me to sell me on going to see that show. Oh, if Hugh Jackman had won, I would have, uh, I, I would not be live right now because I would, <laughs> I would be crying still. Sorry, it's like so dark in here. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you. <laughs> Um, we have light. Hugh did look rough. I, yeah, I just, I don't know. Yeah, definitely underwhelmed by the Music Man performance. I know somebody asked if it was worth watching. Um, I think it's worth watching to, uh, for context, I guess. <laughs> the, just the musical performance, not necessarily the, uh, oh, yeah, maybe. If, if the choreo in Mary and the Librarian is inspired, then I would have rather have seen that. But I am glad that they got to show the kids in the audience. That was like the highlight. Though if they did, what what is it? Is it Wells Fargo Wagon where the tiny horse comes in? Cause that would have been fun to see too. Yeah, I, you know, honestly, the Paradise Square performance I thought was the best choice for them. I think it's going to sell people on that show. Same with um, uh, Girl from the North Country, which is closing in a week. They did extend, so that's closing. Um, but, uh, but that's another one where I thought that they really highlighted the positive aspects of that show. Um, even though, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't really capture the rest of the show at all. Well, it'll be interesting if Paradise Square, because, you know, for anybody that's following, uh, grosses, um, Paradise Square has the lowest grosses, um, but it'll be interesting to see if Paradise Square is able to stay open after uh, the Tony Awards performance. Because the Tony Awards are a bit commercial, um, and I thought that their performance was a good choice. Um, and we'll see if the, they're able to stay open or if they do end up announcing that they're closing this week. I hate Garth Drabinsky. I've done multiple uh, videos on how much I hate him, uh, and I'm a little disappointed that Joaquina shouted him out in her speech. But um, maybe she was paid to. Uh, or he was like, hey, I'm going to not pay you if you don't shout me out. But I am very happy that she won. Um, she was absolutely fantastic in that show. And um, for anybody that is considering getting tickets to Paradise Square, it is worth seeing it for Tolkien Kalokango alone, even though Karl Strabinski should stop producing. I'm so glad that Paradise Square got to let Joaquin sing Let It Burn because she just, she does that, she does that eight times a week. That is, that performance is what she does and it, it stops the show every time and I'm glad that the whole world got to see it because even if that show closes in a week, <laughs> the entire world got to see the powerhouse. I, granted, she doesn't do much the rest of the show, but she does do, <laughs> she, she does do that. She, she does act a lot, but um, that is the big song. Paradise Square was robbed for what? What else would you have wanted it to win? I, I would not have been surprised if Paradise Square had won choreo. choreo. Um, I, uh, my, my pick was Christopher Wheeldon, so I'm glad that he won, but um, the, the choreo and Joaquin are the, the two highlights of that show for sure. Yeah, so Paradise Square, um, I've done some videos on it, but in, in my opinion, it is, uh, it is a show where they took the outline of Ragtime and tried to squeeze a new narrative that they already had into that mold and uh, it, it doesn't work, but there's, there's moments, there are moments that are great, but it is, it is, if you, if, 
<laughs> don't go in trying to fit it to the blue pin of r- ragtime because that's what I did and it like it that's all I could think about the whole show but it does follow the the blueprint to a T um so if any of you have seen both of those shows just think about it and there's a lot of parallels uh, <laughs> the story of Paradise Square is actually like it's a it's a good it, it is a a good story to tell so for anybody that doesn't know Paradise Square is the story of um uh, a square in New York where Irish immigrants and black Americans lived together uh, during the time of the Civil War and the um, the black Americans want to fight in the Civil War but can't and the uh, Irish Americans are being drafted and so animosities start to build um, but ultimately it's and it kind of shows how um, the community starts to d- deteriorate because of the tension that builds because of the Civil War so it's an interesting story to tell they just they try to cram too much into it. Um, and Garth Drabinsky is producing it, so which we don't love. Uh, so Garth Drabinsky, uh, in case anybody doesn't know, uh, was jailed uh, for, <laughs> for uh, essentially uh, financially ruining the uh, cast and crew of his previous productions. Um, I did really hate the minutes, I'm sorry. Uh, but yeah, he and he has just... Uh, led to some very, very abusive uh, environments. Um, for anybody that wants to know more on Garth Rubinsky, on stage blog has a great expose. Um, also, um, yeah, they, they have a perfect, I think it's like a, a three or four piece series on everything that he's done. Um, but we do not, we do not like him. You know, I, I would not be surprised if Paradise Square has set a date. I would not be surprised if that's where Almost Famous ends up opening. They just uh, are trying to see if they can hold out a little longer. Uh, Also, speaking of tea, one of my favorite moments that was kind of unintentional, considering they could not have predicted it, but the the Sondheim tribute, which was absolutely beautiful, showcasing all of the fabulous, motivating, uplifting letters that he wrote to people throughout his life on this day that another well-known composer wrote a very not uplifting letter to his cast. I thought that was a very nice shady touch. Um, also sung by Bernadette Peters that, you know, notoriously sung for both of them. Um, uh, yeah, for anybody that that did not realize, uh, Cinderella on the in the West End closed today and Andrew Lloyd Webber did not show up to their closing performance. Instead, he wrote them a letter about how it was a costly mistake, um, which we do not like that uh, horrible treatment of his cast that is multiple times that he has kind of you know treated his cast horribly um so the the uplifting and great Sondheim letters was a really good touch yeah yeah no Angela Weber's letter was absolutely insulting I can't believe he wrote that I would love an invite uh to the Tonys because they need to invite more people uh let's talk about all those empty seats for uh (laughs) for (laughs) for Billy Crystal's bit they clearly need to invite more influencers. Uh, he, he was very funny. Lin by himself. Oh, you mean like, I, did he bring like his nephew? Cause he brought, he brought somebody um, when he was on the red carpet, but Vanessa did not, did not go. <laughs> yeah, I know Axel Weber was invited. Uh, <laughs> uh, Axel Weber invite me next year. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, Cynthia Erivo's outfit was immaculate. I also loved Danielle Brooks wearing the color purple. <laughs> I loved the shout outs to the COVID safety managers and that they shouted out that they invited them. Um, I thought that was a nice touch. I love that they shouted out the understudies and swings uh, a total of nine times, uh, sort of, (laughs) with my funky tally. Yeah, seriously, the, the safety managers deserve the world. Yeah, it is, it is interesting. So the, none of the people in the, um, orchestra were required to wear masks they were all tested before going and then everybody else upstairs needed to um wear a mask um which that's a weird policy but i i kind of understand why they did it um yes we did get the first non-binary winner with toby mar toby marlowe and i love that ariana debose uh pointed that out um and pointed out the the increase in diver- diversity in the in the uh the tony nominations uh so that was absolutely fantastic yeah i'm super i'm super happy that that lucy and toby ended up pulling out a score i know um some people were upset that michael R. jackson should have won but i love that they were able to split and and do the split with um book and score uh, hoping for a six win oh 
Uh, yeah, I would definitely disagree with you there. Six did get robbed in 2020. It would it would have won. It would have easily won in 2020. Six is a whole musical. It's a non-traditional musical, but it is a whole musical. <laughs> we we love non-traditional musicals here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, Six is an 80-minute musical, but it absolutely is a full story and, you know, we love interesting concepts. Um, I don't think it should have won, but I, I do think it is a full musical. <laughs> All of the song choices I loved. I loved that A Strange Loop did a combination of the, the two opening numbers. Um, I thought that was a good choice because they got to highlight kind of the structure of the musical by having um, at least two of the thoughts um, do their little introduction. Um, we got to see uh, Jaquil have a solo moment um, and they got to sing um, Big Black Queer Ass American Broadway Show at the Tonys, which, yes. <laughs> and, and I love that they got to have the moments with, you know, calling out how white the audience is to the all white audience that could afford $5,000 tickets. Um, so yeah, I thought A Strange Loop's performance was beautiful. You didn't like A Strange Loop's performance? Oh, I thought it was great. It is definitely not a show that's not for everybody, but I loved it. I thought they did a really good choice. I, I actually, I wasn't surprised by A Strange Loop's, uh, how few wins that it got, just because uh, I, I'm glad that they highlighted the the rest of the musicals. Um, and ultimately, the, the only thing that it it didn't win that I thought it was going to win was uh, Jaquel Spivey. Um, but uh, that 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 was a tough showdown between him and Miles, and I'm not mad that Miles won. Oh, I thought I thought the the MJ performance was a good choice. You know, the the, the highlight of MJ and one of the things that really sells that show is uh, Miles's performance, but also the choreography. And so I'm really glad that they showcased a number with all of the choreography. And I'm gr glad that Christopher Wheeldon won. Um, and and it's the number in the show that uses kind of the coolest projections and it's easy to take out of context of that show everything else is kind of woven into the story i really i i honestly i've done some videos on mj um i know it is it is a controversial musical to say the least but i really thought i was well done i thought lynn nottage did a great job with the book i thought the performances were fantastic um and i thought it, it showcased mj as a very flawed human being um so even though i know people are disappointed that it didn't go full into the allegations but i think that is is such a touchy subject to cover in a musical that i am glad that they didn't um because that would have been a different show and you know considering there are two very different documentaries on the subject uh but i i thought mj was incredibly well done and i'm glad that it won what it did yeah i think i think i think christopher wielden directing mj as a white man is it in fact as shocking and disappointing as to me as stephen brackett directing a strange loop um i kind of wish that they had had a uh queer black director for that show as well um but um but yeah it's you know uh yeah they should have I, they should have let let a, a strange loop finish their speech. I, I I like as much as I know the lead producers always give the speeches for the musicals, but I thought that they should have let Michael R. Jackson give that speech, even though he already did it. Um, it that was a weird a weird choice to to have their lead producer do it. <laughs> it was it was interesting to have. Um, you know, Chris Harper give the speech for a female centric company and then a white woman give the speech for a black queer centric A Strange Loop. That was just, uh, didn't, it didn't sit well, but, um, oh yeah, I, I hope it, this boosts all of the sales of uh, A Strange Loop definitely, um, and company. I hope this boosts company sales because A Strange Loop sales are not bad, but company sales are not great company did deserve all the love that it got oh yeah i know a lot of people are going to company on tuesday um and that energy is going to be electric i am jealous of all of you i will be seeing karate kid on tuesday so i will not be there <laughs> but <laughs> did company take home the most awards either company or lehman trilogy uh i don't think company will tour i don't i maybe it it seems like it'd be a hard thing to tour because they would have to redesign the set um, considering they, you know, stuff comes from the floor, um, which I like that they, they, they did it differently, but I like that they kind of showcased that in their performance. Did Patti LuPone leave the ceremony? I, no, 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 they showed her after she won. Uh, oh, Tuesday at Company is just going to be the first performance after the Tonys, so that's, that's just what is what spe is special about it. It'll be, because they're, they're, they're dark tomorrow. Gosh, Matt Doyle's speech too is just adorable. 
<laughs> Chris Harper does not pay my salary yet, yet. Um, also, for anybody keeping track, there was five mentions of Chris Harper paying salaries. I, I did love that Chris Harper referenced himself. You know, it was a good bit. I love that they ran with it. Uh, I, you know, getting married today would have been a, a cool choice for the company performance, but I thought they did the perfect choice of being able to highlight that entire cast. And they really can only do that with um, the opening number or doing uh, side by side, which, but then you don't get the, the three boyfriends. You know, I would have loved to see Jen Samard win over Patty too. I think uh, best featured actress in a musical is one of those categories where any of them could have won and I would have been happy, except I guess probably Jane Houdichel. Um, but Jen Samard or Elle Morgan Lee, I would have been happy. Leading actress in a musical, I did I did ultimately pick Sharon D. Clark, but I, I figured it was going to be between uh, Sharon or Joaquina, and um, I'm not I'm not disappointed with the results. You wanted Sutton to win? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Um, I don't even think Sutton should have been nominated, but I didn't see the see the show, so maybe she's fantastic. Also, for anybody keeping track, uh, Joaquina should have won last year for a uh, leading actress in a play. Um, so the fact that she got it this year for leading actress in a musical was a sweet, sweet, you know, justice. Um, she's just she's fantastic. I don't love the show, but she is just so good in everything that she does. Uh, Slave Play was last year. Uh, I was just talking about Joaquina was nominated for Best Leading Actress in a play last year, and she lost. But yeah, it, it was eligible for coming back to Broadway. Yeah, no, you're you're correct. Slave Play last year was a hundred percent robbed. <laughs> it should have it should have won Best Play in twenty twenty or or I guess twenty twenty one. Uh, the Tonys made you want to see all the plays. You should want to go see the plays. The plays were so good. Most of the ones that won are already closed, um, or like uh, How I Learned to Drive uh, closed today. <laughs> Which I'm actually kind of bummed that that didn't win anything. Yeah, no, she, she, Deirdre was floored. Uh, I've never seen anybody so shocked as Deirdre O'Connell when she won and Felicia Rashad when she won. Um, and one of those I was elated by and the other one I was not at all. <laughs> yeah, none of, none of the musical awards to me were surprising. There were some shocks in the plays, but all of the musicals panned out how I expected them to. Yeah, Deidre O'Connell. Oh my gosh. And Deidre O'Connell and the sound design for that show. Dean H was probably one of my favorite plays. It honestly should have been nominated for Best Play too, but we had to nominate the minutes instead. Uh, I hated the minutes. I notoriously hated the minutes. <laughs> it is the only play I did not like this year. And, and look, I love Tracy Letts as a playwright, but the minutes just wasn't it for me. Um... <laughs> I, uh, you know, when I'm home, I literally have a August Osage County poster on my wall, but he can't, he can't write all great shows. Yeah, no awards for For Color Girls. I thought, yeah, I, I wanted, I wanted to win Revival, Kanita, and um, Costumes, and it won literally nothing. Kanita Miller should have won Best Featured Actress in a play, and she lost to Felicia Rashad in Skeleton Crew, um, who won should not have been featured actress. Um, she much more should have been leading actress in a play, uh, but two also should just not have won. Not that she was bad, she was fantastic in that play, but she did not perform the most heart-wrenching monologue while nine months pregnant every night for eight shows a week. Um, yeah, there, there are some very interesting choices um, in leading versus featured. Though I, I thought, like, I think it's interesting it is interesting how they decide featured versus leading, uh, both with Felicia Rashad. I think Gabby Beans is kind of another one where I, th I, I agree that she should have been leading actress, but it is, I could have seen her as featured too. Like it's kind of a, a toss up um, because that is more of an ensemble show. Uh, Lehman Trilogy sweeping did not make me mad. That is, uh, look, there was a lot of really great plays, but Lehman Trilogy is maybe one of the few plays that I wanted to hate when watching it, and it was my favorite show of the year. I I can't believe I'm saying that, but it was... It was like that, Dana H, Chicken and Biscuits, and, uh, yeah, Skin of Our Teeth. <laughs> yeah, Skin of Our Teeth, Adam Riggs should, should have won. They absolutely should have won for scenic design, but um, I'm glad it got costumes, especially if the puppets count as costumes. Most of my favorite plays weren't even nominated. Uh, I, uh, in a perfect world, I would have kicked out uh, the minutes 
and Hangman, which I liked, but it just wasn't best play for me. And I would have brought in, um, yeah, probably, uh, there's just oh, Thoughts of a Colored Man should have been nominated. Dana Age, honestly, should have been nominated for best play. There was just, there was a lot of good plays. And then, yeah, Chicken and Biscuits is my sentimental favorite. Oh, Plaza Suite is, is one of the three shows that I didn't see, but I'm glad that you enjoyed it. Um, it didn't really, it wasn't nominated for much. Uh, I am surprised that Birthday Candles would have, did not get any nominations. I, I enjoyed Deborah's performance. I do think that um, the the best leading actress in a play category was one of the most stacked categories. Best leading actress in a play for both the plays and the musicals was the most stacked, just in terms of the amount of eligible actresses and all of the work that they did. Um, and so, yeah, I thought Deborah Messing did a fantastic job in Birthday Candles, but but yeah, I, I am shocked that that, did, that play did not get more love. Oh yeah, no, the, the reaction that I had to Deirdre O'Connell winning best leading actress in a play was embarrassing. I, I ran around the entire apartment. Yeah, Is This a Room and Dana H was the coolest pairing. Um, also, if you all didn't realize, Is This a Room is gonna get a movie adaptation. <laughs> Not a direct adaptation, but uh, Tina Sater, who uh, created Is This a Room for Broadway, is uh, going to make her film directorial debut with um, the reality winner film. So I cannot wait to see that. Um, I did see Skeleton Crew. Um, I'm shocked Felicia Rashad won. I, I'm, I'm not mad that the show won an award because it was a really good show, but out of everything to award, uh, that was a, a wild choice to me. Um, but... Uh, but Skeleton Crew was a really good play. Um, yeah, honestly, it was a really strong season for plays across the board. The only play that I did not like this year was The Minutes. Everything else I thought was just good. Um, and then Lehman Trilogy was the best. <laughs> it was just... I do hope that Lehman Trilogy has more productions. It did, it did have a, a, a small run in LA, um, so it'll be interesting if they bring it anywhere else. I think they filmed it. Um, uh, American Buffalo was the third of the three shows that I did not see. Uh, I do not like David Mamet, and so uh, I did not see his show. Um, <laughs> I have no desire to see that show. Oh yeah, no, I, I do not stand Mamet. Uh, there are shirts that you can get, by the way, that are less Mamet, more Vogel. Um, and there's a whole series. <laughs> Jesse Mueller, why are we, why are we crying about Jesse? Um, Abby Mueller missed uh, her performance today because she tested positive for COVID. Um, but uh, we do love that Mallory got to step in and, and do a great a great performance tonight and get a special shout out. Oh yeah, Jessie Mueller is in the minutes. I forgot that she's in that show. Get her out, put her back in a musical. <laughs> oh gosh. Uh, at least, uh, you know, at least, I recently found out that that was a limited run. For some reason, I thought it was an open-ended run and it was going to run forever, but it's not. So <laughs> it closes in a, in a few. Look, Jessie Mueller is wasted in the minutes. I love her, but she's absolutely wasted. Yes, less man at more Vogel. Um, I'm a little bummed that How I Learned to Drive didn't win anything. Um, but again, the plays were just so tough. POTUS is definitely worth seeing. POTUS was freaking hilarious. Um, it didn't win anything, but it, it it's really, really funny. And I love, it's so rare to see a farce with like all, an all female cast. And uh, as somebody who's a character actress, um, I just, that was, it was cool. It was fun to see <laughs> how different all the women in that show are. Freaking Deirdre O'Connell. I had that in my picks and I'm still shocked she won. I was absolutely elated. Um, also, there was something kind of just poetic. Um, I don't know if y'all realize, but uh, Dana H. was the last show that Sondheim saw before he passed. Um, and so the fact that Deidre O'Connell won the award and following her win, they did the in memoriam was kind of like a beautiful uh, through line. That was an unintentional through line, um, but I did love that. Uh, yeah, the, the Sondheim tribute was a lot less than I thought it was going to be, but I thought it was, I thought it was the perfect touch. It was simple, beautiful, um, really embodied the, the, so much of what Sondheim did in his life. Um, I thought children will listen. It was a, the perfect choice. I, I hope Angela Lansbury's okay. I, I don't know if she just couldn't travel or didn't want to go, but I, I do hope she's okay. Wait, there was a, there was a shout out to 54 Below? I missed that one. I love 54 Below. When was that? <laughs> was that in the opening number? 
Oh, oh, 54 Below won the special award. Did they air anything for that? I didn't see anything. Maybe that's when my uh, my my stream froze. I don't think I don't think the the Spring Awakening performance was necessary either. Uh, my my theory is that they are trying to get Oscar buzz um, for the for best documentary. That's like my my working theory, because you know the Tonys are commercial, so and they have to pay to perform. So it's like you know why would they pay to have that performance? Um, so my theories are either they're trying to reboot Leah Michelle's career, um, <laughs> they're trying to get Oscar buzz for the Grammys or not the Grammys, the Oscars, or, uh, the fact that Sk Skylar Aston has a new show on CBS. So, you know, it's kind of that. Yeah, I was not even paying attention to Leah Michelle when she was on stage. So <laughs> did she have a dark spray tan? <laughs> I couldn't tell if it was like the lighting. I, I, I'm not surprised that the Bridgerton musical did not get any recognition. So I, I don't know if, if people are aware of this, but the, the Tonys are just for Broadway. So they don't celebrate musical theater. They celebrate specifically Broadway theaters. They're almost like a regional theaters award show. Uh, only that region happens to be the most commercial theater region in the country. <laughs> so it's, it's, it, it doesn't highlight just musical theater or theater in general. It specifically is for Broadway. Um, so it wouldn't have made sense for them uh, to... Yeah, they do have to pay to perform. So that's that's why a lot of the times you won't see shows that have already closed perform. Uh, that's why we didn't see Caroline or Change perform because it wouldn't make sense uh, for them to pay that money um, when they aren't launching a national tour. They're not a new show, so it's not trying to... I, I, w I would have expected a Flying Over Sunset performance before I would have expected a Carolina Change performance. Because for a new show that wants to build buzz around you know, getting the rights or that this show exists, that makes sense to me. But for something like Carolina Change, that's a revival that already closed, it doesn't make sense for them to perform. But they do have to pay uh, not just for... They have to pay... Yeah, yeah, Brian's exactly right. They have to pay the performers, the production costs. They also have to pay the rights uh, to perform whatever number that they choose to perform. There's a lot of a lot of paperwork that goes into that. It would it would have been nice to see Carolina Change. Carolina Change did perform at the Olivier's though uh, when she won there. So there is a performance of her singing. So if anybody wants to see clips of Sharon D. Clark those exist. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's I exactly right. That's why it, it was very controversial that Be More Chill did not perform and then yet they uh, decided to parody one of the numbers and not credit them at all. That was kind of some shady stuff. Ugh. Oh yeah, yeah, you do have to re rehearse the cast of a closed show. They have done it before. So like um, when Sideshow was originally nominated, it had closed and they came back and performed a number from that show. Falsettos, the revival, performed a number. Um, but again, it made sense to do it because they were going to be launching a national tour. They had a pro shot that they could advertise. Um, so there was still revenue coming in for that show. Whereas Carolina Change, there's kind of nothing. Oh yeah, yeah, Carolina Change is, is, was roundabout. So nonprofit theater, um, they don't have the kind of money or the, the needs to to perform at a Tony Awards ceremony. Uh, I'm not, I don't, I don't wish that Funny Girl had performed and I'm not su surprised that they didn't. <laughs> They're already selling well and I don't think they needed to perform to help boost ticket sales at all. I love that this year wasn't a sweep. Uh, really the only sweep was Lehman Trilogy, which wasn't surprising to me. Um, uh, because that it like it was just such a good show, uh, design wise and directing wise. Uh, but for the musicals, I think like pretty much every musical won at least one award, including Girl from the North Country, um, which I, I called the orchestration wins on that, and I'm still shocked by. <laughs> I love that Simon Hale pulled that one out. I I really loved the Girl from the North Country performance, um, but I because I just I love those orchestrations, and I I thought that they um did a really good job. Uh, Music Man did not win, so sorry. I guess not everything won. <laughs> All of the new musicals, um, except for Flying Over Sunset, um, won something, I think. And then other than, you know, Diana and Doubtfire and the ones that really weren't nominated for anything. Um, uh, yeah, if you don't like Bob Dylan, I, I'm actually not, I don't like Bob Dylan's music at all, um, but I love them when they're sung with the most beautiful harmonies in existence. Uh, yeah, Music Man did not need to win anything. It is making millions every week. 
Um, yeah, Diana did it. Um, sorry, all of the, the best new musicals that were nominated ended up winning something other than Flying Over Sunset. All, all six of the nominees. Uh, and yeah, no, no Funny Girl wins. <laughs> oh, Diana is a, a camp legend. The, oh, you know, technically Diana, Diana H won, apparently. I, okay, and I loved the Act One show. Um, I, I love that we got to see all of those awards. I love that it got its own opening number. I thought uh, Julianne Huff and uh, Darren Chris were fantastic, like mini hosts. I really liked the setup of that. And um, it, it was interesting to me that they didn't showcase all of the winners for that during the main ceremony, um, which kind of assumes that everybody watched that first hour. So I was surprised that they didn't do like a, here's what you missed on Glee only, um, for the with the one act but I, I did i did love that 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 i did love that split a lot that it, that was really weird the fact that best book was in the main telecast and best score was not i that was such a weird split yeah the act one opening number was awesome and i love i love that darren chris wrote that opening number for the the act one i'm glad that he's getting back into like writing musical theater songs um because not many people know but he wrote a very potter musical so <laughs> it's not his first time writing um but uh uh, I'm, I'm glad that he's doing that again. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. Oh yeah. I am a, I am a star kid through and through. I, I do hope that, that the clips from that end up on YouTube for free. Um, but for anybody that did want to watch the act one, it is on Paramount plus and you can get a free trial, which is what I did. And I got a free trial last year too. So, uh, they just re-upped my free trial. <laughs> and I, I, I love that they, they also shouted out the writers for the songs. Um, watch the offer. Okay. I mean, I, I have a free trial for a month. I thought it was just a week trial too, but it, it's actually a month. And you can, if you missed the Tonys and didn't watch them or missed that one act, uh, the act or the act one segment, you can still activate that trial and um, watch it. Oh yeah, that is that is true that it, you had to get the premium Paramount Plus in order to stream it live. Um, they, yeah, they should have advertised it more. I didn't even realize that. Um, and I, I ultimately got the premium because it was free for a month. Um, but yeah, I did that. They should have uh, done a lot better at announcing that. Uh, no, Katie, for real, as a, a former West Coaster, I mean, I did travel to Atlanta for this one, but as a former West Coaster, being able to watch it live with the rest of the country is such a big deal because it was so annoying to have to wait hours in order to, <laughs> to find out. <laughs> yeah there were some technical issues definitely there was one time that they came back from a commercial and it seems like they didn't realize that they were back from commercial early 2023 predictions uh k-pop k-pop or kimberly akimbo one of the two i think uh the actress to beat next year is going to be victoria clark in kimberly akimbo what she does in that show is amazing uh she's just she's so good she's so good <laughs> So, so keep an eye out. Um, that's going to be, that's going to be the show to beat next year. Um, and then maybe K-pop. I did say K-pop. K-pop is, uh, going to open on Broadway. It is a musical. It is a musical that is opening on Broadway in October. Uh, Into the Woods, it'll be interesting if they decide to, uh, submit it for Tony recognition because it is a, uh, New York City Center transfer. Um, and, the year that they transferred Sunday in the Park with George, which was their gala performance, they uh, revoked it from eligibility. Um, so they may do the same thing here since it is a very limited run. But if they if they choose to give tickets to the Tony nominating committee, then it would be eligible. Um, it's really up to the producers. Am I coming to see Legally Blonde at the Muni? Uh, I hope so. We'll see. We'll see if I can make it. I will be in St. Louis tomorrow. Um, I, uh, am leaving, I'm currently in Atlanta and I will be leaving tomorrow morning. Oh, I will do a whole video on May We All, but it, it needs some work. Uh, one of the craziest things is that Lauren Pritchard I saw in May We All two days ago, and then she was at the Spring Awakening performance tonight. So, <laughs> uh, but she is, she is in, I, yeah, I'm, I'm going for Karate Kid. Um, I, I do collect Broadway merchandise. I don't, I don't normally collect the shirts, but, uh, uh, my, my merchandise of choice are enamel pins. Um, so anytime there's, uh, pins, that's what I'll get. Uh, dream revival. My dream revival is obviously Legally Blonde. Um, uh, my dream L is, uh, Mimi Scardula. Uh, if any of you know her, she, uh, was in We Are the Tigers. Um, absolutely bubbly personality would be an amazing L. 
So that is, that is my dream revival at the moment. I am trying to get to San Diego to see Limpizka, but I, I may not, now that I got a speeding ticket, I have to pay off if for anybody following my stories to get to Atlanta. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, it is it is midnight where I am and I have to drive to St. Louis tomorrow So I am going to go <laughs> but I am so glad that um, The the Tonys ended so well and we're such a great show. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in y'all um, Bye everyone